So today we got a question from George who's having a problem with too much of a good thing. So right now his situation looks like this. He's a competitive blue belt in his gym. He's doing really well. He knows that he, in the you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, he's a beginner. But again, he's gotten enough skill under his belt where at this point he's able to experiment with a lot of different stuff. He says that when he goes into the gym, he'll do a lot of wrestling sometimes. Sometimes he's focused on that. Other times he's playing around with full guard. Sometimes he's going to X guard. So he plays around with a lot of different stuff and this variety keeps jujitsu very fun for him. The problem that he's running into at this point is he says that he's starting to not feel proficient in any one area, and he says that he struggles in competitions to work a particular game plan. Because you know, in a competition, you really have to zero in a little bit on something to be effective. And so he says that he's struggling there, and he's wondering if I have any advice on how to balance between these two, right? Taking in information, experimenting with stuff, and then focusing in on something in particular. So, uh, George, thanks for the question. And this is something that I, I tend to see at Blue Belt all the time with my students because Think about it this way. As a white belt, when you go into jiu-jitsu, you're really new, you're just fighting to survive, right? You're just struggling to survive, and because of that, you get cooped up into a few positions that you can use effectively, that, that you can survive with. Now, as you get better and better and better, and you've been, uh, you're a blue belt, so you've probably been training for at least two, maybe three years at least, at this point, you've got a little bit of skill under you, and it's almost like giving a teenager their first car. Like, I remember my first car when I got it. <laughs> it was a 1988 Fiero. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so I got my first car. I would drive around everywhere because it was fun. I had this new freedom. And it's the same thing with your jiu-jitsu, right? You, you got cooped up in this position to survive. Now you got good enough, and now it's like, ah, I've got this new freedom with the skill that you've developed, and you can go play around with new techniques. And this is why I call the blue belt the buffet belt, because, you know, it's fun. It's, I let me try a little bit of this. Let me try a little bit of this. And you can just kind of sample the line and figure out what you like. Now, the problem with this is, is that you're right. You do eventually need to narrow things down, because whether it be a competition or even a competitive role in your gym, you need to have, like, an A game. If you look at the best competitors in the world, you'll see them do the same techniques over and over and over again. And that's not by mistake. It's because that's what they've mastered the most. Again, in jiu-jitsu, you're, you're going to know a lot, but you're not going to master everything. You're going to typically have a, a very particular area really mastered, and the rest of it you know. But it's the, the area that you master. That's where you really want to have your competition game plan focused on. And even if you're not a big competitor... If you go to your gym and you watch the brown belts and the black belts compete or uh, roll with each other in a really hard roll, you'll see that they start using the same stuff over and over and over again because that's their A game. So how do you, again, going back to your question, how do you balance between sifting through all this stuff and at the same time taking in more information? So an analogy that I'll draw with you that I thought might be useful, um, and I, I saw this the other day, I thought this would be uh, relevant, is I was looking at this historical article and they had a bunch of pictures in there, and I'm a big history geek if you guys didn't know, and there was this one uh, picture where they had this prospector who had a pan and the pan was in like a stream. It was in the old west back in the 1800s, and if you know how that works, right, they would put the pan in the water, they'd pull up a bunch of sand and dirt, and then they would sift through it, find the gold, keep the gold, discard the rest, do it again. So you have to kind of take the same approach with your jiu-jitsu, right? You're digging for all these techniques, right? You're putting them in the stream, pulling out the stuff. Most of the techniques that you're taking in probably aren't going to work for you. But there's going to be some when you sift through them that, boom, you're going to have some stuff to work with. So think of it that right way right now. You've basically got a big pan full of dirt and sand, and you got to sift through this to find the gold. So you got to sift through all these different techniques that you've been playing around with and experimenting with and find the ones that are going to be the best for you. So all you really need to do at this point is figure out, okay, which ones do I feel like are the best for my game right now? If push came to shove, which ones do I feel with the most proficient with? And then hang on to those for a while. Like my brown belt uh, today, he was actually talking to me. He's focusing on a particular guard pass and guard break that chain together. Me right now, I've got three techniques that I'm working on because I'm trying to focus in on something. And so what you want to do is you want to give yourself some time to focus in on these areas. Now, the way that I undulate between the two is that whenever my game feels kind of stagnant, whenever I feel like I'm just kind of getting stuck in a rut, whenever I feel like I'm just not, nothing new is going on, it can become kind of boring sometimes, and there's no competition coming up, I'll then open up and I'll start watching instructional videos, I'll go on YouTube, I'll uh, just start messing around with weird positions, I'll take in all this information, begin experimenting, and then once I get to the point where I feel like I'm kind of full, like I, I just don't, don't feel like I can take anymore, I put myself on sort of a technical diet, if you will. I stop watching instructionals, I stop watching all that information, I just sort of cut myself off, and I look at what I have, that I've been playing with and I hang on to some of it and then I, I'll, I'll rep it out in drills and I'll 
try to use it and rolling for at least a month or two. Um, right now, the, the three or four techniques that I've been working on, I've been doing them for about two months and they're getting better and better and better. And then eventually I'm gonna to get to a point where the techniques feel pretty good and I get kind of bored and I feel like I'm hitting a plateau again where I'm kind of stuck, good. Now I open back up and then I'll focus back in again. And so you can kind of think about doing the same thing with your game, George. As you're experimenting, bring it back in and focus for a while, especially if you have a competition coming up or if you feel like you're losing that effectiveness on the mat. And then once you get to a point where you feel like you're just kind of stagnant, you're just kind of like at a plateau, open back up, try new stuff, and you can kind of keep going back and forth. So, um, brother, that's the, uh, the answer that I have for you, George, and thank you so much for the question. And guys, I'll talk to you next time.